We're back with another Minnesota podcast for you. You sound so nice in here. I love the your studio. voice. Sounds really good. Well, thank you. <laughs> I swear, these mics, these mics are so different than we one than the ones we use out on remote. Um, I'm really glad you listened to that show at O'Gara's, by the way, because uh, mm. uh, tonight, you know, doing the the live uh, oh, a Dubé at Bennett's, I uh, made sure that I kept those levels down because holy crap, you're a little overmodulated last week. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, well, we were I mean, for a little bit, but... and then it it evened out. Yeah, later yeah. On we started out we started out a little rough, but it, uh... it sounded like we were both like <laughs> super scrap. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. But uh, yeah. now we are back in the uh, cozy confines of the South Side Studios, um, and we have a uh, you know another <laughs> what. What's he I doing? thought you were going to say a special guest. Yeah, well, we do. I mean, we do have a special guest in, in the house, and, I, and he doesn't seem to make any noise. He seems to be the most chill dog ever. He has not even come over and like made me say hi yet, and I, I say that in that you know almost every dog at least makes like gives you a sniff and goes, what the fuck's up with this guy? But no, nope, he's just completely chill. Oliver, in studio tonight. Uh, are you, hey, Oliver. Make a peep. Jeez. He did perk an ear up when I said his name. That was about it. I, might, I guess I, I shouldn't know. ask for him to bark. He did look at the mic there, though. He did. Uh, all right. Anyway, so um, if you listened last week, you know that we uh, touched on the uh, the uh, Hillary email stuff, and uh, we, we we need to finish up that tonight. Uh, it's not it's not over. Um, the story continues. Uh, the drama continues, depending on how you look at it. Um, I, I did I did catch, and I don't think this was in either of the stories that we had up today. But um, did you see that Diane Fine is it Feinstein or Feinstein? I I would say Feinstein. Feinstein, yeah, that sounds right. I think it's Feinstein. But I I'm not sure. But did you see that she's coming out and it, it's swinging and she's all after Hillary too? Oh, she's and she's mad. on the Senate Intelligence Committee. Oh. So to me, a Democrat to come out and to be that pissed about it too, and somebody who would care, you know, because she's obviously invested in the whole like intelligence community part. Sure. That to me made me kind of go, okay, now it's not just, you know, the crazy right wingers and all the, because the Republicans obviously are all standing up against her because she's the name in 16 or yeah. So she's the only, I mean, the Democrats themselves have kind of said that it's Hillary or bust. Like, I mean, they don't really have anybody else right now. Um, so of course the Republicans Does anyone are eating have this anybody up. Else is well, the, better the Republicans question. don't have anybody at all either. <laughs> no, no one has anyone. You would think We're though that screwed. the Democrats. You just had a, a, a president that w- w- you know went eight years. You know, won two. He won re-election and Obamacare. I think from the public perception wise is good. Like people like it. They're not necessarily opposed to it. I, I think it's I, it's gaining in popularity. I wouldn't say it's it's super. Super, you know. I, I guess what I'm saying is I don't think that that's keeping any Democrats out of office no. necessarily. No, so I just I, 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 I think it's weird that reasons. neither party has anybody popping up. That seems interesting at all. That that's odd to me. Um, you know, it, it always. I mean, think about Obama. It was Clinton and Edwards forever, and it was kind of like, well, which one of those were going to choose between? Clinton was viable, but I don't think people were quite ready for it yet. And all of a sudden, Obama came out of nowhere with a year before the election. So. Oh my God! Do we only have how long do we have? When's the next election? Twenty eighteen. Yeah. Well, no, it'll be sixteen. I mean, twenty. So it's next what? year. Next November. Huh? Yeah. No. Yes, we're a year and a half away. Nah. Obama's almost done. Wow. Nah. Wow. We're three. We're what? Two and a half years into his second I term. Nah. Wow. Nah. Can't be right. Nah. No, that's for sure. That's it. He was. Uh, what? Well, I mean, he was elected in eight, so that makes sense. <sighs> Man. No, and then twenty twelve. Right, well, but you know what I mean. First one, um, but oh so. Oh my God, that's crazy! It feels like yesterday I was walking into the voting booth, and voting for him. I mean, it really, it really feels. But that was also my um, freshman year of college, so college kind of feels like yesterday still. See, I don't. I, I I can look at that both ways. To me, that feels like ages ago. I mean, I had I was. Uh, knee deep in the radio career and it, it was a whole different world for me mm. than it is today but it, it does not feel like it's been eight years since he was elected I, I can say that but just where i was when he was running for president I, that was a whole different world to me like life was a whole <laughs> different animal well you're still sitting in front of the microphone though. no I, oh, i'm back i'm back in front of the microphone thankfully but so the uh, what do you did you learn anything over the weekend that makes you think do you look at this Hillary thing any differently cuz the <laughs> only thing that i want to say for sure and then obviously i want to react to anything that you have to say about it but i just want to make sure that anybody out there who thinks that i was outraged last week or really upset about this 
I think they're constantly lying to me and cheating and stealing and, <laughs> and hiding everything from me anyway. So I don't, this was not like a revelation to me, but if you want to, prote- at least if you still believe, and I, I think Molly does, but if you still think that everything's above board and that these politicians are actually. I don't think everything's not, and above board. I'm sorry. Board. That's really putting words I mean, in your mouth. Right. I mean, I, I'm, right. I'm not like totally, I don't know. I don't, I don't feel like I'm clouded over. Like, you still I, think, I think the system works and it matters sure. and the Constitution exists and, and I, it still matters? Like, yes. Yeah. And, and I think and most people are like you. I'm not saying that you're the weirdo. I'm the weirdo. But I, 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 don't, I don't think people don't lie in office. I don't think everyone's right. perfectly honest and truthful. I, I don't think that's true. I just, I just I see the best intentions in our politicians somehow. Uh, that is that, again. I, I'm jealous of you. Well, God, I, I wish I could look I've, at the world that way. I've considered being a politician before, and I know politicians, and I just I look at them and I know them, and I, and I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't really think you're. That's your job. I don't really think you're out for some crazy ass, you know. You know what? You know what scheme. that's really like. It's like it's like cops. When you see the stuff in Ferguson or see, you know see right. that cop in New York and stuff, it's easy to go you know cops are bad and I right. hate cops. But wait, not all like all the cops I know are cool. But but most cops suck. And like no, we'll think about that then. All the cops you personally know are all good. But just the abstract ones that you ha- you don't know and you get fed this media story, those are the ones you hate. You may be in the politicians thing. I think you could look at it that that way too. But to me, there's always going to be bad eggs. There are going to be be people that are in it for a, a different reason. Uh, that have ill intentions. Do I think that's everyone? No. Well, and I think I, I don't even think that was Bush. And you blame me sometimes for thinking that. I if, like to call Bush you a Bush did, hater, even when you're not necessarily I'm, hating. I'm not. I, I don't think he was the smartest. I think he made dumb decisions. Uh, obviously, there was a huge thing about Iraq <laughs> that weapons of mass destruction did not turn out to be a thing, which is very unfortunate. Do I think that he was a total liar, horrible? It, person? No, I don't. I don't. See, and I... <sighs> I... I really disagree with his policies and what he did. I don't think that he is inherently evil. See, and I guess I, I think the parallel here is, is maybe right on because I think that Bush is the cop too. It, it, I don't have a problem necessarily with the person that's, that's policing or executing the law it's the whole system that I have the problem with. Sure. It's the, the reason that cops are quote unquote racist and, and, and there's violence towards blacks by cops isn't necessarily because cops are racist. And isn't it's, it's more the whole system has put them in this position. Sure. And I think that and the politicians are kind of, I think way. the politicians are actually even up to the president, the same thing where they're, mm-hmm. they have a policy that's put into place before them. And then you can even go conspiracy theorists if you want and say that there's people in dark rooms that tell them what to do. But even if you just say, no, the whole system has been set up in a way that either they can or can't do certain things. Things. Right. Either way, to me, they become just you know bricks in the wall. They, yeah. don't, they don't necessarily they don't have as much power as we like to give them. At least I get what you're saying. I think I think part of the system is like that. I think part of the system does allow for good change, um, like we've talked about with with gay marriage and legalization of marijuana. And I think things are happening that are good, but there are still things that are totally run by PACs, by super PACs, by these companies and these these key individuals that have so much money and that's who is kind of running part of the country. And so I think you can look at it both ways. In this case with Hillary, do I think that she was being dishonest? Uh, Still no. Okay. Well, (laughs) I I did. I saw, I thought the nut graph in one of the articles. The nut graph. You you like that term? (laughs) What's a nut graph? Never heard that before? Well, I have. I can't picture what a nut graph looks like. It's the best paragraph. It's the paragraph that hits it. That that nails it on the Oh, the The nut nut graph. graph. The G-R-A-F. I was thinking to my uh, oh, a graph yeah, in yeah, journalism no, not, is G R A F. Yes. And yeah. and a gra- I was thinking like a pie chart. Like a different way to display data. Not, not paragraph. Okay. But, so yeah. the, the nut graph. Nut graph. Uh, <laughs> but okay, so and this is what I hadn't seen it in writing yet. I was making assumptions last week cuz sometimes that's actually more fun to do on podcasts. <laughs> um, but the quote from shit and this is this is the CNN article or it, this is not a right-wing website, okay? Uh, but the quote was Housing her email exchanges on her own server gave Clinton a lot more control over the fate of that correspondence. Clinton could have permanently 
deleted emails, for example, which to me is mm-hmm. the whole point. I, I know you and probably most people are more worried about the security issue, but I'm just going, well, but the reason, the thing about the server thing was what messed me up was if you have it, it's not on a private server, now it is out there and we can retrieve it even if you deleted it. Sure. But the whole having your own server thing to me is the whole point of that would be so I can delete right. it and make sure nobody sees it. And, and what that, her motives for that it would be, I have no idea. Well, but and that, and I just that didn't cleared like that. it up as well would be, the uh you know okay this the server if anyone you i didn't get this to begin with and now i get it so a server would be gmail yahoo at yahoo at gmail.com outside server exactly in your own server you would have secretary of state at hillaryclinton.com and it would be built just for you and it would all of your emails would be funneled onto your own personal server correct so your own personal dot com so you control and the whole thing of that being because you know they're public because you know that the public has a right to them right you could bypass that that that's the whole thing about having your own server that i had a problem with Again, I, I don't know what she'd be up to. I, you know, again, if you got, you know, the, the right wingers would be going Benghazi. And, and even if you want to, I mean, apparently Eric Holder is using a bunch of different aliases in, under his emails. Sure. So <laughs> and you've got the yeah. Fast and the Furious thing. So there's a lot of things that people that can easily go, well, this is why you would hide it. And I, again, I, I think that this is where, <laughs> this is why I don't care and don't buy in any of this shit is because Obama ran on Bush is secretive and this is bullshit and Rumsfeld and Cheney and dirty. And this is all, they they keep it behind closed doors and they don't let the American people in on it. And we're going to be transparent. And this is going to be a different administration. And it's the same fucking thing. It's not different at all. And I just wish that everyone would just go, let's stop expecting anyone to ever change. Republican, Democrat, independent, same shit. And just to put it out there, just, for precedence, other Secretary of States have used their own email addresses. So Condoleezza Rice used her own. Um, Republicans have used their own email address for for everything. Yeah. For personal the only as thing well that as... I saw that was the only uh, well the server thing, and then yes. she never had a government one. She Everybody else had a government one, and then they also used a private. Um, or and they th- only kind of use their own like they use double well right but but and, and here's you can attack them on this too is what they what they claim is they never used their personal one for official you know correspondence of the mm-hmm. united states mm-hmm. well bullshit i mean how do we know right. if you want it to be hidden that would be the, you, that's when you use that one right? right so again just my whole point is why is anyone surprised by this like just of course she's hiding her emails they're stealing yours. They're reading yours right now. Like, what do you expect? So I, I just think that it's... Uh, and again, too, and I don't know how you feel about this, but A, slow news cycle. B, this is like just something... It's just fodder for the people that do just stay at this surface level. This is just something to talk about, but it doesn't really mean well, anything. But it's but it's riling you up, and it's riling other people up, and it's coming up to an election, and anything that could possibly be shady or even illegal, as we've said, the... the the legality of this is super cloudy. Like she's allowed to have it, but she's supposed to disclose everything. And that's where it gets confusing because how do you know if anyone's fully disclosed everything on their own server, right? So I, I don't think it's important to talk about. I think it's uh, it. this should set precedence for how we move forward with government officials and their emails. I mean, there needs to be a really strict um, kind of rules to follow, right? Right now, there's not. I mean, the government in terms of internet security is a fucking mess. Like, they're on all different types of servers. They're using all different types of ways to, you know, to make sure that we're that our information is secure and it's failing. And this is just one example of how there's there's really is no set structure for how the government, um, the government's websites and emails should be set up. Well, I think you also got to look at this too. From let's think of who she. I mean, the Secretary of State. You're the top diplomat in the country. You're going to have to have some secret correspondence. There's just no way. I mean, going back to yeah. the revolution. I mean, you don't, you're telling me that, that every paper that was ever handed between the diplomats of us and, and Britain and France and anybody else that was involved in the conflict, you're telling me there wasn't any secrets there that were, that were technically under the rules of, say, the Confederation or of the British government or, or French government that should have never been able to be done that way? Of course there were secrets and of course there right. were things that, that, that had to be, that, that necessarily that you wanted to be in the, Ameri- in the United States' interest. So you can you can look at this both ways. You can look at this as a, an attack Hillary and she's she's evil and hiding stuff from the American people. Or you could say it's kind of part of the gig and let's just stop clouding ourselves and thinking that 
that that it wouldn't be. Like, what are we thinking? Of course, this is she's a, she's a top diplomat. She's gonna lie to people all the time. I mean, she said no. I mean, this is her saying this, so I'm just I'm thinking here that she's being honest. I'm just taking her word for it. She said that no, um, class. She did not use the server to send any classified information and only emailed one foreign leader from the United Kingdom during her time at state. Clinton told reporters there were no security breaches on the server anyway, but the statement declined to disclose how her emails were encrypted. So, and she's also saying that every single thing that was used for a professional reason on her server was released to the State Department. The 55,000 pers- emails yeah. or whatever. And then her personal emails were, were you know, obviously uh, kept private. It, uh, you know what? You know what this is? This is a when did you stop beating your wife? She can say everything she wants. Totally. She cannot prove that she didn't delete something. You know what I mean? Like it's a false. You can't prove something that's false. Well, so, unless if or a negative. I, I you know think I mean? that there are, and I touched on this last week. You can hire private investigators, people that like the best hackers in the world, to go into these servers and dig it up. And what right. they need there to do is there probably still some kind of digital footprint right. of some kind. And they need to hire someone separate from the State Department, separate from the NSA, whatever, and get someone who can objectively go in and kind of scrape the barrel of her server and see but, if there's but anything again, in there. Let's assume the worst then. Let's assume sure. she's evil. She's plotting with Iran. I don't know. Okay. You know, let's just but let's just for assume. just for the argument's sake, wouldn't she make sure she already hired that guy to make sure it was foolproof? You know what I mean? Like yeah. she's gonna have access to that guy too. Yeah, okay. I mean I, I guess I just uh, here's my other concern about this. <laughs> I don't think this is going to sound very strange, but given that she knew she was going to run in 2016 and given how she knows you cannot make a mistake that would put you into jeopardy of losing the election, I don't think that this choice of having one email server was done out of dishonesty. I think it was honestly out of, as she says, convenience. Uh, I think it was a stupid mistake and I don't think, I think she's too smart to have done this without really realizing that this could have been an issue. See, and I, I think she's a Clinton. (laughs) I think they've both been (laughs) so dirty for 20 years that this would be just the tip of the iceberg. And if you really dug and if, if if we had, I want someone to start digging. I mean, really hire someone, hire someone, get someone in there and, 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 you know, well, here's the thing. Of it. we've kind of talked about this too, but you need like a real media and we've talked about, you see it all the time where people link stuff on Facebook and it's from like www.imfullofshit.com, yeah, you know, right. it, 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 or it's just a blog. But at some point, either the blogger's got to be right or the real media has got to step up. And I don't think the real media is ever going to step up. I mean, I think you and I are as much the real media right now as anybody because most people aren't even talking about in this context. It's just, what did she do? And it's in the framework that's already been set up. Like, we, you and I are outside of that right now. And But you know why? Because we don't have enough listeners for us to have been so what do you worried mean? You're about saying, yet. You're saying you know what I mean? even like, if something comes out, the media is not going to cover it? The media is going to jump on that shit. Like, I'm, well, I'm, nobody's okay. business if something comes out. The media is a bit complicit. Now, we, we've seen like the snow... Did you ever watch Citizen 4 yet? I mean, in that case, Fox News isn't going to be complicit about anything that comes out about her. There's no way that Fox News would not jump on a story about something coming out. Everyone's talking about it. I mean, this isn't going to end anytime soon. The only thing is, is that let's say they do hire someone. I, I'm saying someone. It's probably an organization or a team of people. But let's say they hire someone. They don't find anything. It's it's a It's a... A sound investigation. People agree with who's been hired. They've done all they can. Nothing's found. And you still are kind of worried, right? Because she could have deleted all this right. stuff. Right. That's what I mean. I don't think you... I think there are still evidence out there you would never find. Possibly. It, I don't right. know. Right. Exactly. But then we, it loops back to the beginning is that the whole legality of having your own server, no one really knows whether it's legal or not. So it's kind of like we have to drop it at this point because we don't have those rules in place. And if we want this to not happen in the future, we have to put rules in place, clear rules in place about what government officials are allowed to do and what they aren't allowed to do with their emails. So it's it's, it's almost a moot point, you know, and unless something's found, it, it really is a moot point 
No, and I think she's smart enough that we won't. So yeah, no, I, and, and I'm not even. You have, a, you have a lot of faith in her, man. No, I. Well, you don't get to be the president or to be in the, all of the places she's been, especially after being the wife of that fucking president, without being very <laughs> cunning and very smart sure. and very politically savvy. And yeah. she, I have all the respect in the world for Hillary, Hillary Clinton so when maybe it comes you to want someone like that for politics. president. <laughs> no. I still want, I, you know what? I want us to fucking just, I don't want a guy that runs. I want us to pick a guy. I want us to go, some guy who started a new business and it's crushing or a guy who's, who's run a huge corporation or a guy who has never done either one of those things and never even seen a business. Maybe a homeless guy for crying out loud. I would almost rather have that than any political professional. These guys are all about power and not about anything about fixing anything ever. I don't and know look at the that. infrastructure of this country, if you just want proof. The infrastructure of this country. There, I mean, have you seen that? I just saw this on Facebook, too. But have you seen the picture of the bridge with the bridge below it? Have you seen this? No. It's on a major highway in America. I don't know. I think it's in, like, Atlanta or something. No. There's a bridge. It's, like, 35W. It's falling down. Literally, pieces are falling off of it. Uh-huh. Instead of fixing the bridge, they built another one underneath it to catch the debris so oh. it doesn't hit the cars. Okay. That's where we are today. Where, okay, where, well, that's a very, that's a very obscure example. No, no, but 35W fell. 70% right. of bridges well, in this country was, are like considered failing. Yes. It, what my point being is just that there's a lot of things that matter like for just day-to-day fucking life, not big picture stuff that, that they don't care about. It's all about just what you like when it comes to election time and getting elected. It's not about fixing problems. Now, and again, let's go back to our policemen and our politicians. There are people, I know, I, I know uh, Carla Bigham, she's a politician from Cottage Grove. I don't even know what, she might hold office right now. I think she might be on the city council, but maybe some, she was in the state house. Um, she is a good person, nice person, diametrically opposed to her politically. But I have nothing, like, I don't think she's a bad person. I don't think she's out to get me. Right. But I do think that you put her at a certain level and give her a certain amount of access to certain power, she becomes that. Like the system feeds into it. It yeah, creates I, the yeah, bad person. You, I know. You think, yeah, you put these people on like an evil pedestal. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I want to run for office and win and, you know, be a senator or a congressman or whatever I am. Just to prove to you that I, we, you probably don't change that much. I would actually, that's a great experiment. I want to see that. <laughs> Guys, vote for Molly 2016. We're getting the election going right now, or the campaign going right now. Um, oh my God. But no, I'm I mean, I would actually, I, I would love to see somebody that I truly have I've known or trust make it to, you know, senator or governor or something of that, that stature mm-hmm. and see if I really go, nope, same person. Nope, didn't change. You know, cause, and don't get me wrong. Anyone's gonna. I mean, if you give me a million dollars, I'm probably gonna change a little bit, right. regardless of power or anything. Like that. You know what I mean? Like people just change when they're put. Give me a different job, well, I, and well, my my. Yeah. You know, I probably change a little bit. Sure. I mean, yeah, I, I get it. But you also say that it's it's not the people that are the issue, and then you, it's the system that's the issue. But now you're saying it's the people that it's the issue, and like, you know, I think I I don't think anyone's like inherent. There are people that are inherently bad in office, but the majority of people are inherently good. Uh, yeah, they're just stupid. <laughs> I don't know about stupid, but it's, it's, I don't know. It's all interesting to me. I, I it's fascinating. It I is mean, interesting. I think what you really want at the core of your soul, Jason, is, uh, is election reform. I think that's really what you want. Well, have, yeah, I mean, I want term limits. <laughs> have, we, have we ever talked, have we ever, yeah, I mean, and we don't need to go it. into that. I mean, that's a, that's a topic that's been overdone many yes. a times. I mean, we need, we'll just we get need into more term limits for our, for our senators. Yeah. I, I to me, that's just basic common term sense in but, general. but people that again people in power would have to vote for that and that would be tough i mean unless can we do it by referendum well it depends on the state i mean so but we could def- we definitely couldn't do it for federal office uh well it, i mean i guess for house and senate i guess but not for president i guess uh, that would be a constitutional um, deal you know, I'd have to look into it. You you might be able to vote on term limits as a referendum. Well, we have states. it as president. I mean, we have two technically. Yeah, yep. and and Congress Congress people have term limits. I well, think it's... Senate does. The House you can do for life. Can you not? Or is that the the opposite? I always forget whether it's. God, this is how savvy we are. Well, we are. no, no, but but I'm I, pretty I, sure I mean, House I think, it's like... good, and it's Senate that's got okay. the limit. God, is it? Ten? I don't know. Yeah, now. Tweet us at my gov podcast yeah. at MK Burke. Yeah, no, I feel stupid. But, I, but bottom line, well, no matter what, we still I'm, need I'm trying to think of the last. I mean, we've had Franken and Klobuchar in office for a while. Yeah. And, I, and I'm and i trying to think of how many elections they've run in. And then we had Bachman. God, you know what? I don't. Maybe we don't have a percent either. 
I don't think we have him for either. I think it's just president. Oh, no. Now I don't that think I that's really true. Think I don't think that's true. Well, okay, I'm going to look it up. During the break, uh, why don't you look it up? Okay. Uh, we'll come back. We have, let's, let's take a look at the old little rundown here. We've got a bunch of stuff to talk about here. Um... I, I do. Uh, uh, speaking of cliche radio topics, um, I, I do want to touch on this war on drugs thing, just because it's a completely different angle. Um, it, whether or not you believe in uh, making drugs legal or illegal, or do drugs or don't do drugs, I think that this guy's got an interesting take on it. Um, maybe we'll touch on that. We got to touch on Sam Simon's passing, uh, creator or co-creator of The Simpsons, and uh, that and much, much more coming up right here on the Old Minnesota Pubcast. Hi, everybody. This is Alyssa. And this is Liz. And we're with The Focus Radio. Where our focus is to bring you resources to grow your business and double your income. Join us on Mondays from 3 to 4 p.m. Central Time. TheFocusRadio.com. I do want to uh, do due diligence to the NCHC Frozen Face Up, not just because they are a client of ours, but it is a fantastic event. And it is going to be at the Target Center. It's March 20th to 21st. And they've got some fantastic deals right now. Full session ticket packages for all four games start as low as 60 bucks, And they will have single uh, game tickets going on sale February 23rd. You can call 1-888-9-AXSTIX. A-X-S-T-I-X. Or go to TargetCenter.com. Go to the Target Center box office. It's going to be a great event. They've also got, you know, this uh, fan fest going on. They're going to have live bands. They're going to shut down part of First Ave, part of, uh, First Ave there and have bands on the street. We're going to be podcasting live this part of the event, and if you are coming from out of town, which, you know, obviously the, you know, the University of Minnesota is no longer in it, so most of the fans who come here are going to be traveling, uh, whether it's from Grand Forks, St. Cloud, Duluth, uh, you know, Miami, of Ohio, Denver University, whatever, you're going to want a hotel room, and obviously there's a wealth of hotel rooms in downtown Minneapolis. It's as great as a, a venue as the X was for these events, uh, you know, downtown Minneapolis has got so much more going on, so many more hotel rooms, and if you go to my Twitter account, or my Facebook account, you will find a post or a tweet that shows uh, the, the, the NCHC Frozen Face Off coming on March 20th, 21st, and where you can go to book discounted hotel rooms because the NCHC got together with the, you know, the Chamber of Commerce and the hotels and, and, and put together some packages where folks can get, uh, get a break on hotel rooms. Just tell them you're coming for the NCHC Frozen Face Off. But you'll see the link on my Twitter account and my Facebook account. Just click on it, and, uh, and they'll lead you right to, uh, to discounted hotels, which should be a fantastic, fantastic event. What'd you come up with? Uh, Oliver, get out of my mic. <laughs> you want to go on air? Um, uh, you you were right. I think he's more. I think he's like saying, "Why am I on radio? I'm meant for video. This is bullshit. <laughs> Where's the camera?" I think that's. His, I think that's his angle. I'm too cute for radio, yeah. mom. Uh, let's see. You're right. It's neither, right? The president is the only office in this country that has term limits. As far House as I know. of Representatives unlimited two year term limits. The Senate has unlimited six-year terms. Yeah, so that's fucking bonkers. I always thought one of them. I think I thought House was like four two-year terms or something like that. Well, to me, this because the Senate has so much power, it's the one that should turn over. Oh, it's God. the one you should be forced to turn over. That's to, that's just common sense to me. Well, it's yeah, isn't that kind of crazy? I mean, that's the whole thing. What it comes down to sometimes for what? me, I took an election reform class, and I was like, this is this is literally the only thing that needs to change. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it affects so much about how decisions are made and why people make the decisions they do. Um, and it's, it, it, we talk but, about getting the money out of politics. That, there I mean, isn't money in it. politics. This, it all the same way anyway. No. Without, we're, we're with term limits. But again, <laughs> all the people are invested, uh, literally. Well, that's why I almost, I mean, that's why President Obama is saying kind of fuck it right now and he's just trying to get stuff through that he really believes in although the whole um he vetoed something that's that never happens well, presidents don't veto especially I mean, as a lame duck huh especially as a lame duck president but um meaning he's out of office really he's not that's what i'm again. saying um but uh 
What, but the whole um, that neutrality, though, that that he went along with that, and at least from what I read, it went by the contributors. I mean, Comcast and uh, those guys were. The, or who, wait, how did that work? I don't. It, it, however, it worked. Wow. I mean, there's two sides of it. I mean, you got like Comcast and Verizon on one side, and you've got Netflix and whoever on the other. And he went with the the one that he went with, and he made the head of the SEC change his mind. Is that's who donated more to his campaign? So mm-hmm. again. Is it tit for tat? I don't know. Probably. I don't know. Probably. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I like But again, to think and like you're that... saying, though, because he's not running for re-election, what is the tit for tat? Like, what is he getting in return? Sure. But, you know, maybe the head of Comcast is his buddy. You know, I don't know. I mean, these guys are all, <laughs> they all run in the same circles. Yeah, so I don't know. I, I don't yeah, know how but, that works. But and his position was, I think, I disagree, just disagree with me if you want, but uh, sorry. I'm, this is kind of a distraction. A little bit. <laughs> Oliver. Um... I thought that his stance was more more of a liberal stance. I mean, well, yeah, he wanted control. He wants the FCC to have control over the internet, or he wants right. them to I mean, have so regulation that, ability, I mean, which is very liberal. He's that a, is a very he's liberal a Democratic president. It's a liberal stance. I mean, it make, kind of makes sense. I'd be more surprised. But again, if it's he a went... big corporate stance too. Sure. So that's what I'm saying is you could have either way. You're going big corporate on that. So as a liberal. You kind of isn't that lose lose? I thought liberals were usually anti big corporation, and in this case, again, it was just well, big business versus big business. It wasn't really big business versus the little people, as it was possibly more, but more free flow of information with his stance that he took. Well, well that's the way it's framed, at least. Yes. Right. Um, can, can we, do you want to? Can we talk about this little war on drugs thing? I, sure. I, I think we t- maybe touched on it off air, but I want to. We'll play this little clip. Maybe I, I'll. It's been since last week, so I don't remember exactly how it goes. So I'm just going to play it, and then I'll, I might have to give you a little uh, information about it that you should have beforehand anyway. But either way, listen to what this guy has to say. This is, his name is uh, Johan Hari, I believe, okay. on Bill Maher. Okay. Uh, you know, Real Time with Bill Maher, HBO. What are the implications of this for society if, if you're, you're saying that heroin is not what we thought it was and people can do it recreationally? There are huge implications, firstly, for the drug war, right? The drug war is based on the idea that the chemicals cause the addiction, therefore we need to physically eradicate the chemicals right. from the face of the earth. If actually the vast majority of people who use these chemicals don't become addicted, if in fact you've got to have a whole other thing going on it makes sense to wage war on that thing what we do is we actually make the real cause of addiction worse we take addicts who are addicts because they're isolated and cut off and we cut them off and isolate them more in the year 2000 portugal had the worst drug problem in europe one percent of the population was addicted to heroin it was mind-blowing and every year they tried the american way and every year the problem got worse and worse so they got together in the end they got a panel of scientists and doctors and said look tell us what will genuinely solve this and the panel came back and said decriminalize everything from cannabis to crack everything but and this is the crucial next step take all the money we used to spend on arresting drug users and prisoning drug users all of that take that and spend it on really good drug treatment and it's not drug treatment like you think of it in the u.s some of it is like rehab most of it's about reconnecting addicts with society things like subsidized jobs say you used to be an addict when you're ready they'll go to a garage and they'll say if you employ this guy as a mechanic for a year we'll pay half his wages the goal was to make sure that every addict in portugal wakes up with something to do in this is going to be a bit of a tough sell for republican congress <laughs> but to, re- sub, to give money to drug addicts so i was i was thinking the exact same thing that bill maher said i mean that is like that is so much what certain Republicans or conservatives, I should say, would would view as as helping people junkies on welfare. Yep. No, <laughs> it's giving. Why don't you just give them the crack? Why don't you just give them the heroin? That's right. the Republican response, which is so small and and short sighted and completely idiotic. Um, I, I want to. Wait, can I can I say something that I saw on Facebook today? Yeah. Speaking of welfare, a girl posted a bumper sticker on a she went to my high school and she still lives there and she's kind of WT as I like to say (laughs) white trash. Uh, and she posted the government is not your baby's daddy, (laughs) but babies with B A B I E S without any sort of, (laughs) without any sort of punctuation. Like, you know what? If you're going to make a political statement, at least make sure that you have the correct punctuation, the correct grammar that drives me. And she was dead serious. I promise, and I know sometimes in the in the heat of battle, it, it's not necessarily true. But the more controversial the thing I'm saying on social media, the more times I read it. 
Absolutely. Before I post it, you, you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm be, correcting spelling. You I'm have looking for any to. kind of typo. I'm looking. Well, I'm going. Are they gonna get that? Just should I reword that a little bit? Like yeah. if you're gonna say, especially something like that where you know it's very controversial, and a lot of people are gonna come back with "fuck you." You got it. You can't have them come back with "fuck you." You can't even spell. Like right. that. That right. cannot be because you can't make it that easy for them. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so, okay. So the part that, that is, this in this interview on Bill Maher that, that he doesn't talk about before this, that you, you'll kind of get now from hearing that, but there's an experiment that was quoted for years and years that was as part of the war on drugs, that if you took this rat and put him in a cage and gave him water that was regular water and water that was laced with cocaine in this cage by itself, it would just drink the cocaine water until it overdosed and died. Okay. Time and time again. But then somebody looked at it. So they went, cocaine's addictive to cocaine kills. Cocaine itself, the drug, kills, right? Sure. Which, you know, kind of from that experiment, yeah, that's pretty awful. And it's addictive and it's terrible, right? So then another guy decided, well, wait a minute. Let's kind of tweak that experiment a little bit. Let's take multiple rats and we'll put them in like a little environment where they have toys and, and stuff to do and, and food. And, 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 and But they still have the water and the cocaine laced water. Are they with other rats yet? And yes, yes. There's, there's the, it's a rat community, let's okay, say. Okay, great. Uh, and guess what? They don't touch the cocaine laced water. They might every once in a while take a sip from it. But the compulsive sit in front of it and drink it till you die thing completely goes away. So this guy's point is, and, and then he also talks about how many people take medical grade heroin in a hospital every single day. It's, it's millions across the country. If you break your hip, if you have surgery, if you have all kinds of things where it takes You're a lot of, you, know, you take that very strong morphine, mm -hmm. that's super addictive. Like if, if I were just sitting in this room right now with the lights off, putting it into my veins, you're going to go, holy shit, you're fucked up. And I'm probably going to go, I need more, I need more, I need more. And I'm going to have the shivers until I get it. You know what I mean? Like it's going to be horrible. It's going to be train spotting. But that doesn't happen to hospital patients. Well, it What's does. What's the difference? Well. I mean, there's plenty of people what who, ratio? Leave, who leave the hospital who get addicted to, to, to their uh, Has, prescription drugs. There is a drug epidemic in this country where people are addicted to drugs and using heroin and crack and all kinds of terrible drugs, right? Do we hear of much of an epidemic of grandma going home from hip surgery saying, God, I need more of that morphine? Is uh, that an epidemic? Is that a big problem at yes, all in the United States? Of I, I actually think it is because really? most of the drug addicts I know are people that needed um, a very strong prescription drug for for their you know, whatever it was, I won't no, say, I, but, I, and, and they became addicted to people become addicted to painkillers. Yes. yes. But that's the, the, the guy's point is, is that heroin isn't necessarily going to be addictive. It's the situation you're in first. Uh, and I think you could actually maybe take that to the painkiller thing because Brett Favre was addicted to painkillers. That, that, that becomes a mental issue, not just a pain issue. I mean, all the football players are going through the same thing. They're not all addicted to the drug. It, it's a, it's a, it's it's where that individual is mentally that contributes to drug addiction as much as the drug itself. I guess is what this guy's saying. Now, and he and I, neither sure. one of us are I mean, saying that drugs, drugs aren't are addictive at all. And mentally addictive. And he's yes. saying it's more like 75, 80% mental. Or is he saying social? Well, yes. I mean, yes. because. It's where There's... you are at in life. Do you have a job? Do you have money? Are you living in a horrible neighborhood? Okay. Have you been educated? That's what he's saying. And And here's where. I like how he and Mar, or Mar jokes that, you know, good luck with the Republicans, uh, Congress. <laughs> but the only way we'll ever change this war on drugs thing is when we find out what to do with the f millions of people we employ in it. Cops, the lawyers and all that. I mean, there's, there's so many people in this country, correctional people, you know, everybody right. in prisons, the prisons themselves, all of these things that, are, that, are, that people depend on for their livelihood would in an instant disappear if you just said even just marijuana is legal. So, but the only way that we can figure out a way to to get the unions and like, seriously, police unions are are uh, taking Colorado to court about weed. Now, I can't imagine any other reason that they would want to do that other than they have less work. So, but so and, and this is a this is a fifty year transformation, I would think at least. Well, yeah, lower you start lowering expectations of how many tickets you need to well, you need to you know cite people. For. What I'm saying is, is, no, let's stop sending all these people to cop school and start sending them to rehab school. Let's do what Portugal did: take the same amount of money. I I hate how much money we spend on the war on drugs, but if because the re, the reason we don't stop it is the money. So sure. let's take that money and transfer it to the good cause. And and listen to me, Mister Liberal McGovern here. 
let's put it to <laughs> jobs. Let's put it to housing. Let's put let, let's take that money and put it to things that will make these people not want to be heroin addicts and not want to do crack and meth sure. and all that. It, it, it is a mental thing. It's it's right. not. And I love what he said too about how well, like it's a social thing. It starts off actually as a social activity. You kind of get in with the wrong crowd or you're depressed or whatever, and and then it eventually does isolate you. It isolates you from from everything that's important. And then when you make it illegal, as he said in that clip. You isolate the person even further. Yes, you do. Now you're an outcast. Now you're not part of regular society you anymore. Do. You're bad, and you're looked down upon, and so and you can't get a job. You can't pass drug tests, all that stuff. And again, I, like I'm not even advocating for people like not like I don't want jobs to not be able to drug test their applicants. If you are an employer, that's a that's your choice. But I do think that if you want to, you should be able to do any drug you want to too. Um, but I think what, what, what I get from this clip and what I get from the little interview on Bill Maher is just that our, I know that our way of looking at it doesn't work. And it's, it's interesting to see a decent sized country like Portugal, Portugal, take this radical approach and just say, let's go the opposite way and legalize everything. Sure. And, and then, and again, as he said, key, you don't just say, and then everybody's on their own. Cause then you still have a bunch of addicts and they just got cheaper drugs. Well, and You're I, still going to fix the problem. And I think you would, if we legalize everything, I think we would have the same uh, effect that we're seeing with marijuana is people don't smoke weed because it's legal. People don't smoke don't not smoke weed because it's illegal. Right. You make it legal. Probably the same amount of people that are going to be smoking weed illegally. I, are now I will smoking give you a 2% increase. For sure. You know, because I think there are some of those people that are just like, no, I don't do things against the law. Sure. Oh, it's legal now. I'll try to hit that joint. There sure. are, a, there's 2% of them. But, but the majority, absolutely not. I right. think that would be the same thing for a very what would you what what's heroin a class whatever well, yes. narcotic whatever yes well narcotic um, but yeah you know, but, I, I mean I, they put marijuana in the like class two or whatever which I'm is insane. not not doing heroin wait I'm not I'm not doing heroin because it's <laughs> too many not no 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 you were going to say I'm not, I'm not not doing heroin which is still correct you were going to say it right I know what you're trying not to sound like but you were going to say I'm not not doing heroin because it's I'm illegal. not avoiding right. heroin because it's illegal <laughs> I'm avoiding heroin because it's fucking bad for you and it can kill you but i will say and bill <laughs> Maher can it, kill you though yes no no, no. but bill Maher in this interview makes it, it starts it out by saying like so 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 i could i could try heroin like is that <laughs> what you're telling me like i'm i and, and i okay I, i'll be completely honest with you the reason i've never done i've never shot anything up is not because i think it's bad for you or i might die it's because i think i would like it and I would be addicted. Oh, see, like, I'm the opposite. I'd be like, and oh, I have an addictive really, personality I, to begin I, with. I'm gonna die. <laughs> I would just fucking die. <laughs> just leave it up to me. I would be like adventurous once, and I'd be like, oh, I'm gonna try this, and then I would just OD. <laughs> <laughs> You'd go Uma Thurman on the bit in Pulp Fiction, would, start sniffing would, heroin. Yeah, I would. Uh, that's exactly what would happen to me, <laughs> and that is that is exactly why I wouldn't ever do it. It is drugs are scary, kids. Don't See, and, do drugs. And I don't like I, I don't I, I don't have this huge desire to do heroin, obviously, either, because you know I could get it. Uh as you can get you anything know in the world. I could get it. Well, you can get anything <laughs> in the world. Any drug in the world that you can't ban that's like in the, I don't know if I know how to get like I think it would be an effort for me to try and find heroin. I can get any drug in the world in ten phone calls. Okay. Well, any okay. drug in the world. Because sure. through those ten, they know a hundred people well, too. So I, I probably know who I could call. But that's what I mean. And everyone does. The and WT I don't think people that I know on my Facebook. <laughs> I would and I would call you a relatively upstanding citizen. And so, so to me all that proves is that that, that the, the war on drugs again is just about the money and it's just about where the money goes. And so I, let's transfer the money, transfer it somewhere else. Again, I, I don't Mr. believe uh, Libertarian right. over here talking well, about transferring wealth. And I I don't know if legalization I don't think that people should be in prison for for doing heroin or for having heroin on them. Do I think people should be in prison for selling heroin to people, dangerous drugs to people, dangerous drugs to possibly children? Absolutely. Should the CEOs of Philip Morris be in prison? Well, I mean that's that's a whole that's that's a whole. I'm other just saying, thing. By, morally, should they be in prison? Not necessarily constitutionally, lawfully. I'm just saying, in your opinion, are is are they slanging drugs? Are they? Uh, no, I don't know. Okay, because I say yes, they are, but I don't have a problem no, with anyone slanging any drug. As as uh, bad for you as cigarettes are, you're not gonna give one person a cigarette and they're not gonna die from it. 
that easily happens with heroin. Well, that easily I mean, you're happens. overblowing we, that one well, time death we are, thing. But you're we're true, talking happen, about but... we're talking about something that is physically, mentally, much more. It's harder to quit. Actually, they've said cigarettes are just as hard to quit. As they, com- they compare the two, yes. But I just, I don't know. And no, my, I, my I only think, point is right, that no, I think I you totally can't answer I mean, that. Right. It's tough. Right. It's tough. I mean, cigarettes and alcohol are dangerous drugs. Yes. They both are. And they're both really not good for you. Uh, they're so ingrained in our culture now that I think that people should go to prison for, no, absolutely not. I don't think the people who sell them, I don't, I don't think cigarette. But, see, but. Okay. So, okay, so maybe I don't think that drugs should be illegal, but I do think the people that sell the drugs should be. I really do. See, and I... Because they're not doing... I, I think what you're, you're mis... I think you've been raised <laughs> under the war on drugs. I, I think that you've, you're still looking at it as there's something wrong with just the drug, and so they're selling something that in and of itself is bad. Because there is something wrong with the drug, though, because when we when we lose that sense of danger of the drug, I, I do think that is a bad road to go but down. But you're so old. Like if I work for Pfizer, I can sell it. Not, but cigarettes are not isolating. So if we're talking about all the different things that heroin is, and some of some of those things overlap with what cigarettes are. Hard drugs are much more dangerous on so many levels. Okay, than so you're basing it on what their effect is, because I'm not. What I'm saying is, I'm saying, I'm saying, socially, mentally, and physically, it has everything beat. It's it, isolating. It's dangerous it's, on a one-time use, much more than anything else. And I think you're coming at it from that from that aspect that most of the the society, I think, does, which is that you think you have an, a vested interest in what people are doing with even just their conscious her consciousness. And to me, in a free society, I think you should be able to do every, anything you want to until the time until you are taking away someone else's freedom. So, like prostitution to me completely should be completely legal. Sure. Um selling, using, owning, growing drugs should be completely legal. The second that you get too high on coke and go rob a bank, now you've robbed a bank. Now, we can increase the penalty because you were high on coke. I, I'm even okay but, with something like that. But, we're but until you about... broke the law in another way where you hurt someone else, I don't understand what the problem okay, is. Okay, so then sell and do the, or excuse me, grow, make, do the drugs on your own, but don't sell them to other people because but that I is when you start It's really hard to affecting... grow tobacco in my backyard, so I depend on the, on the I'm not corporation to make it a lot I'm cheaper. Talking about but what I'm drugs. saying is that that still would be fi- how capitalism works you're not going to grow a poppy field in your backyard. It's going to be a lot cheaper for you to have one company or, or a group of companies just do that on a mass scale and do it cheaper. That, that's going to be better for the economy as a whole. And it, I mean, that's just how business technically works. Now, I'm totally cool too with if you just want to legalize pot, I think that everybody should be able to grow their own pot. Sure. But I guess I still, what I, I guess I that. don't, I don't think there's a problem with drug dealing. I think there's a problem with drug dealing when it's illegal because that's where no, the extra money is and it becomes about crime. Making heroin legal doesn't make it any safer. So even if you're I think, selling I think it, that's wrong. I think it makes it much safer I don't think it because does. now I can go to the doctor and say I overdosed no, on heroin. I don't, now I can do it under guidance. We're, talk, we're talking about no, we're talking about two different things here. We're talking about making it illegal where or legal where doctors are getting away from medicinal use, and we're talking about making it legal and people are being prosecuted for having it on them. I'm talking about minimally people won't be prosecuted if they have it on them. That's a very different thing than incorporating it into our society and like letting everyone run wild and have it be sold and have it be taxed like like weed is. I don't think that heroin it should go down that road. I don't think that there's but, anything... But hold on, hold on. Aren't you against the whole war on drugs in and of itself, though, how it's working? We're, all we're doing is locking up non-violent people that haven't done anything but to that, anyone else. But I don't think... Whether I it's heroin users, or pot. I don't think users should be locked up I think the people distributing it should be, but, and I, but okay, wait, users, the people that have the problem are the ones that are using it, right? And they are the ones that have should have the additional resources to get help, mm-hmm. to get treatment, to to not be isolated any further. Drug dealers usually aren't the ones using their drugs; they're the ones just trying to make a dime off other people. Right, but uh, here's the thing. And again, guys, just go watch uh, Johan. I believe that's how you say it. Hari on Bill Maher. um, Because he talks about this too. If you make milk illegal, 
it, there will be incentive to guard it with guns because people are still going to want the product and the, the price will escalate and people will kill you in order to sell it. And they will kill their competition because if the competition comes and steals their milk, they can't call the cops it's an illegal product. What are you doing with that milk? So the reason we look at drug dealers as these evil gun toting and sometimes gangsters, even if you want to go mafioso that way on it, the reason we look at them is because there's a profit because of the war on drugs. And there's a, there, there's, you can't call the cops or the government to protect you because it's illegal. So you make the drugs legal and your, your drug dealers become nonviolent. They have storefronts. And you, you can, it, it, it becomes, I guess, I think you could really uh, sanitize it. I really think you do. I really think you take the people out of the ghettos and they can literally go to a place a, a, with doctors and do drugs if they wanted to. I don't think many people are going to go and do heroin. But again, in Portugal, they did. And I even think that he talked about this homeless man that was like looked at and revered when he died. Like, and thousands of people showed up for his funeral. And this guy was all about just how, again, it's the mental aspect of the, the drug user. And it's, it, it's, this is bigger than hating drugs and thinking drugs are bad. This is a societal, as you said, problem that where we just need to stop shunning people, especially when they go down this road and start going, how do we make you not want to do drugs? There is not a single person out there in my estimation that from my experience personally, and just from what I've seen, there's nobody I know that does any drugs in a way that's harmful to them. That's happy. Okay. You know what I mean? There's not a super... I don't know any super cokehead that's happy with his life. I don't know anybody that's a super pothead that's right. fully happy with his life. So the problem is we need to correct why we're not happy. It's not... The dr The drugs are a, are a secondary <laughs> sure. effect is what I... I guess is what sure. I'm saying. I'm saying society leads us to the drugs. It's not the other way around. Maybe yeah. that's a, it's a really long way of saying that. Uh, yeah. Okay. I, I agree with that. I think that... I love that this was brought up on a very interesting small scale in Portugal, like all things considered, comparing the United States to Portugal yeah, on a small scale and a much different culture. Do I think that's realistic here? No. Do I think there needs to be things that start ending the war on drugs, like uh, putting more resources into helping people, putting, you know, getting kind of our users out of our prison system? Do I think that starts with letting drug dealers that are selling to kids off like go free no i don't think that's the answer right now i mean i think it just really starts with small steps start with marijuana being legalized and what? i think the next is really just turning our focus into how like you said how can we help these users become more um you know involved in society again and, and not feel so isolated what do you think is harder for an 18 year old to get pot or alcohol i have no idea and I'm I'm asking. I, I don't <laughs> know were, the answer. They were both super easy for me to get when I was 18. Well, I think it was easier to get weed, though, because I didn't need a 21-year-old to get it. Uh... And so my only point of that is, that I, and I know what you mean, it, 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 I want the guy who's selling heroin to a 14-year-old to die. I don't want him to go to prison. I want him to be shot. But you don't have that if it's a legal product. Because, again, it's at a store. I think there's And you've got to be 18 or 21 to get culture, it. You know? though, I think right now within our culture, there's always going to be a black market and there's always going to be people that are profiting off of drugs in a, le in a, in a legal way. Uh, you know, they're going to figure out how to make more money rather than doing it legally, opening a storefront, whatever it is, or, you know, going through a doctor, whatever. There's always going to be a black market and that is my problem. That is, like, start with the user, start by helping the users, start by getting them less dependent on drugs. And then the people who are selling the drugs don't have as much of a market. Why is there a black market for a legal product? What legal product that you can think of right now has a black market? Purses. <laughs> is it because of the price? <laughs> yeah. So you can get cheaper purses. And I, I, Hey, you know what? I agree. And I think you'd be able to, you phones, could probably get knockoff cell crack phones, somewhere too. Cell phones and purses. But I, I honestly, I think your quality. And guns and, and, uh, and firearms. You can get cheaper firearms off the black market. <laughs> and more easier. And, okay. The, now I couldn't, I couldn't go this way with the makeup or, or with the, I mean the handbags <laughs> or whatever, but I can do that with that is the, the, anything that's got more government regulation is going to cause the price to go up. So that will create a government or a black market. That yeah. is true in anything, in any product. Yeah. But if you make drugs just straight legal, like I say, 
and it's anyone can grow, anybody can sell anything. The prices will be rock bottom. It would be, I don't know how you would get them lower other than, and I and did we talk about this or was I talking to a buddy about this this weekend? How the fuck does weed still cost $60 an eighth in Colorado? How is fucking legal? I understand why. You mean going to it, going to If you to go a to a dispensary, dispensary, it's 60 bucks an eighth, which is what it is on the street in, in <laughs> Minnesota, right? So this doesn't make sense to me because the guy in Minnesota is risking his freedom to sell it to you. You right. know what I mean? And then the guy that sold to him is risking way more because he's got pounds of this shit. You know what I mean? And, and then it escalates as you go up. Yeah. They're selling it for 60 because they're, and that's to cover the risk. Why is so and so corporation in Colorado? <laughs> why isn't it cost ten bucks an eighth? I, I have, don't understand. I have how, no idea. Well, and, because they, they because people will buy it for sixty and eighth, and, and they're used to buying for yes. sixteen eighth, and yes. so they can make like yes, come on. But I mean, yeah, don't not, get me wrong, I'm and not it's stupid. It's not that easy to open a dispensary in Colorado. There are a lot of loopholes around Thank, it. So. That's where I was going. The only reason it was allowed to be legal was yeah. the governments and the corporations figured out how they could run it first. Sure. They went, okay, we'll just have three of you, like in Minnesota, what, you have like two or three companies allowed to make the pills? And they're like, okay, well, you know, you're already in bed with us. You probably paid us to get the rights in the first place. You know what I mean? Like, it was so dirty to begin with, but to me, the fact that they could keep that price as high as they did was, uh, it speaks to how ingenious they are when yeah. it comes to business, really. Because, like, there's, there's no risk <laughs> no, the there's not a risk anymore. Let's but. take a quick break. Uh, we'll wrap it up with whatever Molly wants to be on the show with. What? <laughs> the Rusty Gatenby Review is the entertaining show about entertainment from movies, music, and more. Award-winning TV guy Rusty Gatenby and his review is the podcast with the biggest cast in entertainment, part of the Alive and Social Network. You can get that Minnesota connection to Hollywood and beyond any time of the day or night simply by clicking on the RustyGatenbyReview.com. That's the RustyGatenbyReview.com, part of the Alive and Social Network. <laughs> Hi, I'm Terry Daniel, and I've been a voice actor in Minneapolis for over two decades now. How often are you getting compliments on your voice? Now is the time to do something about it. If you're interested in getting into voiceovers, please contact me via my website at universalvoicetalent.com. And we're back. This is the Minnesota Podcast. Chase and Molly. Uh, this episode is dedicated to, well, it's dedicated to Sam Simon, let's be real. But we're going to talk about him tomorrow, right? We'll, we'll dedicate the show tomorrow to him because, we, yeah, we'll go a little in-depth on The Simpsons tomorrow. Perfect. And if you haven't listened to it yet, uh, after you listen to this show, Make sure you go listen to Mark Marin's uh, "Remembering Sam Simon." He has a really great. How was that? I didn't listen. Really, to that. really good. It was okay. actually it. He recorded it in 2013 with him. Oh, so it was another interview because he did that yep. with Robin Williams too. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, and uh, so he always brings back his old interviews from someone who's passed away. Okay, that's kind of a tradition he has. Okay, and um, see again, I'm so new to him that I only knew it with uh, Robin Williams. So yeah. that is how he does it. He'll yep. bring back the interview. Yep. Does he do a pre and a post kind of thing too? Kinda. He does a really brief pre and he doesn't do his full kind of 15 minute 10 15 minute spiel that he normally does mm -hmm. and he just kind of goes right into the interview and he gives a few nice words about the person beforehand and kind of reflects back on the interview and uh yeah his interview with sam was was really really nice and sam was a fascinating guy uh and they had never met before it's kind of fun to hear mark it's it, mark has guys that he's known forever like louis ck and they have a history so it's fascinating to hear that and then he also has people he's never met before, and he just goes into it, and it's that's really interesting just as well. Side note, I would love it would be a dream come true if we could get to a point where we have to play an interview that we did a couple of years ago <laughs> of you know, know like the creator well, of the ho fucking hopefully, Simpsons. Hopefully, not because someone died, but hopefully because like 
they did something fucking awesome. Well, I'm just saying it'd can, be cool you know. enough that we interviewed them. I, I don't <laughs> They could die. They can, uh, I don't know, move to Europe. I don't give a shit what it is. Don't let Jerry listen to this Memorializing. <laughs> um, but no, so we really did want to dedicate this, though, to... Uh, this was a rough day. Was it just in Minnesota or is this nationwide? It's I know Minnesota. Canada already took a hit, right? Was that earlier? So uh, Target headquarters, which is based here, if you're an out-of-state listener, laid off 1,700 people yesterday. Uh, about does that do you know the percentage? Well, I think there's, I don't know, twenty or thirty thousand headquarters employees throughout Minnesota. Okay, and that spread out three buildings downtown, uh, a couple buildings out in Brooklyn Center, and a building off of uh, three ninety four. And then they laid off probably five hundred people about a month ago. Sorry if my numbers are off. Three hundred to five hundred a month ago. Uh, people that worked exclusively on Target Canada because they shut down all their stores. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, 1,700 people were laid off. And that sucks. A lot. Uh, it's a huge... Hu- I thought Target was one of the corporations that was doing all right. Well, you know? I, I, you know, I think from a stock perspective, they are. They are... There were a lot of people there that... Um, I don't know. It was just disorganized. And I think that this new CEO has kind of come in and and tried to streamline things and we'll see how it works. I mean, there's gonna be a lot of people out looking for jobs in the Twin Cities. So hire, hire, hire. If anyone is looking that is in media or writing or marketing or whatever, just uh, tweet tweet at me, MK Burke, because I've been, I've been around the writing world for a little bit. So. Uh, and you know what? Actually, I do know a job recruiter too. So get at me too. If you are one of those guys looking for something, I can put you in touch with a gal that uh, will put you in. And I'm not talking about bullshit jobs. I'm talking about management, upper management jobs. She's uh, she's a headhunter really. So uh, yeah, get us at MK Burke or at McGuff Podcast on Twitter. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow night. Oh, Garris, come on down five o'clock. Uh, buy you a beer applies to the first person there and uh, or oh. any target former target employee <laughs> if, oh, it's still the first one though <laughs> see ya <laughs>